Sure, my friendly eye, and welcome back to my channel. My name's Kate Nanwim for anyone who's new here, and let's get back into building in Planet Zoo. And today I'm building a habitat for the striped skunk and the raccoon. They have an interspecies bonus when living together, so it's a nice mix for the two of them. And their special coat colours matched my theme for this habitat perfectly. It was actually inspired by the raccoon. Raccoons like to dip their food in water. I've spent many an hour watching raccoons dip candy floss or cotton candy in water and watching it dissolve and being absolutely baffled by it <laughs> and continuing to do it and it is my, one of my favourite things to watch. They're so cute. So I kind of wanted to do like a food themed habitat for the raccoons and I also wanted to add in the skunks too. Kind of ironic putting skunks in with a food themed habitat. But the two variations of the skunks matched in with my theme. Because I'm going to do a chocolate theme. This is going to be the chocolate river from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So I'm currently making the river right now. Did you know that it was possible to use advanced move while terraforming? If you go into the terrain and into the terraforming tab, the second one down, you could have like shapes. And those shapes, if you select one of them and your size that you want, if you then press X, you can steadily move and manipulate the terrain. I find it really helpful when creating rivers especially. Even if you want to make like a pool, like a swimming pool, and you want to make a big rectangle, those things are perfect because when you then advance move the terraforming, you can steadily move and keep the terraforming completely flat. It'll also give you nice straight sides as well. I know I've mentioned the different coat variations of the raccoon and the skunk. I'm not actually going to show how I got them, how I found them. I'm going to show you all of the different variations at the end. If you do want to know how to get different variations of the animals in Planet Zoo, I do have a very helpful short on how to find albino and other variations of animals from the habitat and the exhibits. I will link that in the iCards or in the description if you want to find that but I have a whole tab on my channel for shorts. But terraforming is very very important with this habitat because I kind of want it to look similar to the chocolate room from both films. I actually found a reddit post on creating the set for the newer Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and I was using that as a reference so I'll link the reddit post as well because that is like fascinating. I kind of love the behind the scenes things and there was a lot of curves and bumps so I created those with terrain and I was planning on posting this video Wednesday because that's like closer to Easter. Easter Sunday is a Sunday the 9th of April this year so I was planning on posting it next week but on the 4th, we're getting a brand new DLC for Planet Zoo, the Tropical Pack. I'm most looking forward to seeing Sloth's walkthrough exhibit mammal brown-throated sloth. Yep, it's going to be an exhibit animal, not a habitat animal. Interesting. The Red River Hog is also a really nice looking animal. What are you most looking forward to seeing from the Tropical Pack? Some enrichment items and like food bowls and water bowls, they will flatten the terrain in like a really large area around the enrichment item. And that really frustrates me when I've already done the terraforming for my habitat. So if you want to keep the terrain how you've already done it, and you still want to place these enrichment items down without the terrain being flattened. If you place like uh, just one path down, just click it down and then place the enrichment item down on top of the path, it won't manipulate the terrain around it. And then you can delete the path and it doesn't change the terrain. So for the waterfall, I've placed down some mud walls as like a background for the waterfall. I thought this looked like 
chocolate. I love the texture of the mud walls. I've used it for biscuit as well. I done like a gingerbread house and I love the texture. I thought it looked like melty chocolate texture. I love it. So this is going to be the background to the waterfall. I'm going to put the waterfall special effects over the top of this. I also creating a little pool at the top of the waterfall as well in the same like water colors as the river. But yeah, it was a little tricky getting the pool right. I tried blocking it off with glass barriers because glass barriers are watertight, but the terraforming was a little too complicated for that. So I needed to just move my terrain a little bit to lock in the water. One special thing that's happened since I have been not doing long form videos is I got a kitten. She is a mixed breed mystery. Her name is Caveat, which is a Welsh form of endearment, kind of like loved one, sweetheart, love, because the word for love in Welsh is carry. Frindiae, meet Caveat. My hair is in a ponytail because she likes playing with it. But this is Caveat. My little... <laughs> Obviously she's a kitten, so she's not ready to be on camera all the time and I've switched off the ring lights not to blind her. Ready, come here. Say hi. I know. I'm not happy. Do not hold me like that, Mum. <laughs> oh now she's seen herself on screen. Oh yes, aren't you cute? My hands are so awkward right now holding this little kitten. But she's seen herself on screen now. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> She's so cute. We'll get we'll get a co-star out of her eventually. But yes, here you go, Frindy Eye. This is new baby. <laughs> yes, new baby. Come on then. Oh, why does she have to be so cute? so cute <laughs> she is such a clumsy little kitten the amount of time she's just like rolled off my lap not like from a height like sitting on the floor uh she's front flipped into her litter tray <laughs> i found this bridge that was like the perfect ish size <laughs> for the bridge that I wanted so I thought I would use it as a template and if you do watch my short form content uh, Wednesday is short about world axis compared to relative axis because that's going to be in an update next week as well so I wanted to learn to teach you the basics before anything more complicated comes out uh, this was actually clipped into that, so it was like a little sneak peek to this bridge. And the raccoons need a climbing? Have a climbing requirement? I don't think the skunks do, but the raccoons do. So the climbing requirement is actually going to be these bridges. <laughs> if I'm just trying to copy something from an image and I don't have a template for it, I kind of draw it with my mouse as I'm picturing it so I can sort of see how what kind of curve I'm doing before I start placing things down and it's all about using advanced move and slowly moving things you don't need a uh, angle snap on for this type of detail work but it's just like a little bit of an experimentation and I would just recommend if you're gonna do something that's symmetrical like this do one side and then when you're happy with the one side of the bridge then flip it and place it on the other side of the bridge so you don't have to completely match each curve on both sides just build the one side one nice curve then multi-select and duplicate it over onto the other side so you don't have to make sure that every angle is perfectly symmetrical then because you've only made one side so the other side's going to obviously then be symmetrical it's the same for like obviously i've got two sides of this bridge i've got like the front which i'm working on now and the back so I only built the one side and then I'll just duplicate the whole thing over onto the back because otherwise it's just too much work for the the rest of the hard shelter I was trying to think of something that would go with like the Charlie and the chocolate factory theme 
I wanted to kind of hide the staff buildings as well because we've got all of the staff buildings right next to this habitat and I kind of wanted to hide them from the habitat view. I decided on the flavoured wallpaper. Lickable wallpaper. The snozzberries taste like snozzberries. Uh, so that's what I was going for with this. I had to double check and it was like flavoured wallpaper, something like that. So I tried to find all different signs and food themed items that I could stick on this wall. It's not all fruit <laughs> like uh, on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We've got Bernie's Cupcakes, Messy Good Donuts, uh, I put burgers there because burgers was a nice little sticker. Uh, some of the food shop signs were perfect because it was like uh, ice cream, smoothies, uh, milkshakes, what's a slush puppy thing? What's that actually called? They're like crushed ice stuff. We just call them slush puppies. <laughs> It was on Reginald the Vampire, which is probably really niche, but that one's hilarious, by the way. If you, I don't even know what it would be on. Uh, we watched on Sky. What are the slush puppies called? Just the regular one that's not branded. The crushed ice in a drink. Nope, completely blanked. I give up. I did use some of the fruit from the Indian style. I think they're supposed to be for the food carts. As flavors on the wall as well so I did add some fruit in so some pineapples bananas they were fun to kind of just merge into the walls to try and get some image of the fruit onto the wall without it sticking out too much the colors for the stepping stones I wanted to nod towards Easter colors as well you know like the bright pastel yeah like the pastel rainbow colors like yellows oranges pinks more eastery types of shades um, for those stepping stones which is really fun and they kind of look like rock candy too so they could be edible stepping stones I don't know most things I'm just gonna think in my head that are edible anyway because <laughs> if you've ever watched Charlie and the Chocolate Factory uh, I know as a kid I was like why is this not real even now like it's always a dream right <laughs> to walk into something and everything just be edible it's like going into a sweet shop like a pick a mix and you can just eat anything uh charlie and the chocolate factory was always like a favorite film for me for that because like i've got a major sweet tooth and just to imagine going into a room where like everything's edible dream edible trees mushrooms which will be added into this habitat uh which looking at the film the mushrooms look like they cover uh filled with buttercream and oh my ace heart is just like oh cake flavored mushrooms yes <laughs> and on to some of the decorations i went through a lot of the different props and decorations and favorited quite a lot to save time to find those props later on. I think Frontier must have been inspired by Charlie and the Chocolate Factory for these mushrooms because they're almost exactly the same. I, as soon as I saw those, I was like, they are the buttercream mushrooms from the film. <laughs> I know they're perfect for Twilight and everything, but like these mushrooms, yes perfect i love it uh and i'm just placing everything down in their like original auto color at the moment i'll come back and recolor everything of course i'm using bernie's cupcake thing <laughs> and i'm using my regular trick of doing trios of items and doing different heights of trios of items just to make it look less odd <laughs> I don't, know how to, I don't know how to say it other than just like it'll look better having a group of three rather than just a random cupcake set in the middle of the habitat. I thought this tree was fun but it wasn't fun enough <laughs> so I added multicolored eggs on this tree so like it can look like you can pull them off on the 
imagination song scene when they first get into the factory. Willy Wonka hits a tree and all sweets fall out of it. So that was sort of well, the vibe I was going with this, like bonbons, chewy sweets on the tree that could be pulled off. And the same for the branch-like tree, like the bear tree. I use string lights as like nerd ropes. Yeah, that's like the brand. The chewy ropes with the sweets coming off the ropes, that's where I was sort of going for with this. Uh, using the string lights instead, so like you could pull the bulbs technically off to eat those, or like even the strings would be chewy. That type of thing. <laughs> I was having my ma imagination wild with this. I was having way too much fun. <laughs> Waterfall time! I recolored the water effects as well so they're not white. So it looks like actual running chocolate. And I have to go on about the shorts again. But I do have a shorts tutorial for how to make a waterfall as well. <laughs> Uh, so if you are struggling with the special effects waterfall uh, Basically you work from top to bottom. That's the easiest way. Get the waterfall top, set that up, do the middle Set that up, then the bottom and you're good But uh, if you want a more detailed Explanation I do have a short. It's still less than a minute though But the special effects are all recolored slightly brown. They are a bit of a lighter brown than the water Using the mud walls in a chocolate color as well in the background really helped with the Aesthetic of the waterfall rather than having just terraforming behind it. I think that helped make it look more chocolatey I also added a few rapids effects coming off the waterfall and throughout the river part to make it look like it was flowing a little bit more. I do have the like flowing water texture anyway but the rapids kind of give it more of a wave and more of a flow down the river. I didn't add a tube for Augustus Gloop to be sucked up in but <laughs> it is a, a nice flowing river and that is the entire build. It goes lovely with the theme of the entire zoo and it goes with the animals really well as well because of the different variations that I found. So like I've got the albino skunk, which I've named... It's either like Milky Bar or Dream, which are two white chocolate names. And the ethritic skunk, whose name is Fudge, because it's like a fudgy colour. The raccoons, uh, the melanistic ones. I got a couple, so I've named them after dark chocolate, Bourneville. And Black Magic, which is a dark chocolate chocolate box, like variant chocolate box, they're all dark chocolate though. And the Lacoustic Raccoon, I either named Dream or Milky Bar, I can't remember which one was which for the white ones. Uh, but yeah, it was really fun to like rename them chocolate themed things as well, which will just be like a little hint if you download the entire zoo you will actually realize that I've named all of the animals food things to go with the food themed habitat. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button. And if you haven't already and you would like to, it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. I upload speed builds usually on Wednesdays, but today is Saturday. <laughs> and short form tutorials on Saturdays, but you go on on Wednesday this week. Bit of a mix up. That's usual, my usual. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Schedule went out the window for the past months, but that's my usual schedule anyway. Wednesdays and Saturdays. <laughs> All of my social medias will be linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.